In this video, I'll cover the top five issues that you may encounter in Inkscape and what you can do to fix them. Starting with number five, exported PNG files are not going to the same directory as your SVG file or even have the same name. Opening up the export PNG image menu here, you can see currently it is pointing to the directory and uses the name of the file. However, when you go to save as for any new document or an existing document, it does not take this into consideration and does not change the file name it is pointing to. You can adjust it directly or open the document to see it take the corresponding file name and location correctly. The program is not responding. Now, depending on what you're doing, Inkscape may need a little extra time to finish what it's doing, or in fact, it may be stuck and you may need to physically close the program yourself. Before this happens, as you're working, you'll want to save any major changes that you need to by using Control S or using File and selecting Save from the menu. If you're using a particular tool that you say, for example, typically will cause your program not to respond, that is a good point to save your project before continuing. In my case, that would be Rough and Parts of Path, as well as any large bitmap pictures which I want to trace. Some tools will even give you a dialogue with a warning saying that a process may be too big to complete. You can continue by pressing OK. And you can see here that the program is working, but it is having trouble processing all the information. You can give it time to work. And occasionally, if you see not responding in the top menu, even close it manually by selecting your application and closing all windows for it. It'll give you the option to wait for the program to respond or close it. When you go to reopen your project, if you save at regular intervals or for major changes, you will not lose any major work. Number three, having trouble adjusting the width of a stroke or something about it just seems off and it does not reflect the control points of what you are drawing. What this means is that if it does not reflect your control points, you may have sections which look unusually thick or even unusually thin, and you did not set this up to actually do that. In this case, it will look like you have a few different control points for width in place, but without actually having those in those particular areas. This will be fairly obvious if it happens to you when you're working, because it makes it extremely difficult to get the right appearance you want for your outlines. What you want to do to fix this is typically use the node editor and normally at one of these transition points you will have a node that you can drag to manipulate to see if it fixes the problem or alternate the calculated angle. You can zoom in to get better control and make this area as thin as possible as well as adjust it with more control. Number two, you cannot fill the background of a Bezier path no matter what you do. Now, this will happen if you apply any shape effect other than none. 
If you watched my previous video on complex objects, I explained how this is similar to pattern along a path, and in this case, when you apply a stroke color, it is applied to the pattern which is stretched along this particular path. It does not actually have content to color within the confines of this particular area. The easiest way to reliably add a fill color to a closed Bezier path is to duplicate it and remove the power stroke effect. This reliably fills in the background of any outlines that you create and close. You also have the option of using the paint bucket tool. However, this one is a little less reliable in that it will use the surrounding contents to calculate what area it should be filling. Finally, number one, strokes and objects that have a mind of their own. Suppose you're working on your vector illustration and you start seeing line segments which start to pop out which you did not create yourself. You may in fact be having a root issue at this point. You can reopen your document, see if that fixes the issue, but even if everything does appear normal, you still may have a root problem. Make sure all your layers are set to not be visible to check if any strokes or objects are placed on the root. You will want to move these to an editable layer. Select everything you see, right click it, select move to layer, and select the layer you want to move it to. Now they are all placed on a single layer or even a group of layers if you decide to do that. Now, why might you want to do this? For one, if you are going to move a series of objects, if any of them are on the root, if you were to move, say, this object, for example, you might have those lines sticking out at areas you don't want them to. There are also issues when moving large groups of objects. For objects which do not go into their correct position in relation to the others, in this case, I have a part of the head which did not go to the correct position. What you would do in this case is select the objects you want to move again, and you might want to consider grouping them together before moving them to a new location. You can then ungroup it and it should stay in its correct position at this point. Hopefully this video will help you debug some of the issues that pop up from time to time when using Inkscape.